Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. Hello. I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali. Today, I bring you another book review. And uh, the book we're reviewing today is this one. It's called A Rule Book for Arguments. Uh, it's the third edition by Anthony Weston. And uh, this book is uh, very interesting. Let me explain why. Now, if, if we're debating with atheists, as we, um, in a pre some previous reviews, we dealt with books on, you know, how, how do we talk to atheists? Uh, how do we prove that God does, does exist? And um, whether we're debating with atheists or we're um, having interfaith dialogues or we're just simply writing an, um, a letter to the editor of the local newspaper uh, to protest a certain political policy or whatever the case is, uh, we... Uh, we need to present our arguments in a manner that uh, will be persuasive and convincing. Now, arguments, uh, as uh, Anthony Weston explains, uh, uh, should not be construed only as, you know, two people having a fight. But argument uh, in, in the context of this book is more from the perspective of how do you uh, make a case and uh, what, uh, how do you present reason and evidence to support the case that you are presenting. And at the same time, how do you avoid common fallacies uh, in presenting one's case in, in argumentation? And uh, how, how do you avoid the mistakes and logic that people make uh, when they present their arguments and, and their evidence and proof? So uh, how did I come across this book? Well, in the, one of my first uh, university courses was uh, a course in critical thinking. and. Um, I, I even remember the, 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 the name, the, the uh, course number, it was Philosophy 145. Uh, and, um, and one might say, okay, I have no interest in philosophy, but uh, critical thinking is uh, essential to all human beings. So we, we do it all of the time. If somebody tells us something and we start thinking, did it really happen like that? Could it really have happened like that? And so on. So that's critical thinking. We're just, not just simply taking everything at face value, but we're uh, having a kind of a cross-examination in our own minds as things are being uh, reported to us. So this book, in, in a way, is almost like a summary of everything I studied in that uh, course. So don't let the size of this book fool you. Now, I came across this book for the first time uh, a couple of decades ago when I was uh, the leader uh, in a DAWA training workshop uh, in, in Leicester in the United States, in the United Kingdom. And uh, there, uh, some of the uh, folks who helped me to present, prepare the background materials that we will use in the course actually um, brought this book to my attention. And uh, this uh, book became an integral part of uh, that training, at least the contents uh, of it, even if we copied and pasted some uh, segments uh, from, from the book for that, uh, for that course. And uh, so it's, it, this book has lived with me since that time. It's been a long time. And I find that uh, this is a book that uh, I would go back to again and again to just uh, refresh my memory about uh, some of the points, very important points here. So uh, what does the book basically um, do? It, uh, it, it becomes a supplement uh, for a course like the one I just uh, mentioned. So it can be for a serious study. Uh, but in terms of your own uh, use in everyday presentation of ideas and uh, listening to the arguments of, of others, there's some points to, to uh, no, uh, be aware of. One is that it doesn't help to just simply repeat your statement. Uh, you know, this is my position and you just keep repeating it. And you need to uh, advance uh, reasons and evidence and uh, to, uh, you know, convince the other person that what you're saying is right. Otherwise, there's no point of saying, oh, I said so, and this is my position and so on. And you're just simply repeating without having any effect. Now, you should uh, know about uh, causes and, and people make mistakes about this all of the time. Uh, so uh, two things may be happening in conjunction with each other. Like everything, the one thing, uh, every time the one thing is seen happening, you can see the other thing is happening as well. So this is called correlation. Now, the two things could be entirely unrelated. It just so happens that for some reason, the two of them are happening all, uh, you know, at the same time. But uh, it could be that two independent causes are causing each. So let's say event A and event B are, seem to be happening all the time you know, always at the same time, but something, uh, let's say a P could cause event A and a Q could cause event uh, B. 
And uh, it just so happens that P and Q are happening uh, about the same time. And so they're causing this effect at the same time. So the fact that A and B seem to be happening at the same time is not a proof that one of them is causing the other. And of course, uh, when two things happen at the same time, somebody may say, ah, this one is causing the other. But it could be that the other is causing this one. So you, 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 the fact that they're happening at the same time does not mean uh, or th that, that, that uh, it's definitely one causing the other. One, the, the other could be causing uh, the, uh, the, the first. And uh, both of them, uh, in fact, could be the result of a common cause. So neither is causing the other, but some other independent cause is causing the two of them. So we have to be careful about correlation. Just because two things uh, are in conjunction with each other, it does not mean that one is causing uh, the other. Uh, two big mistakes that people make. One is jumping to conclusion. From insufficient evidence, sometimes people reach you know, an overarching conclusion. Uh, so it's kind of a hasty or jumping to uh, conclusion. Uh, the uh, other um, uh, big mistake that uh, people make, uh, as uh, the author points out very early here, uh, is that uh, uh, when, when people see things uh, happening, uh, they, uh, they, they jump to this uh, conclusion that one is the uh, cause of the, of the other. And, and we have to be aware of that. Now, there is the fallacy of equivocation that I pointed out in many of my dialogues with people of other faiths. Uh, sometimes people use a term and they, they don't define the term. Uh, or even if they define the term later on, they find themselves slipping away from the original meaning of that uh, term. Uh, so what happens is that uh, they say something like, um, um, you know, uh, Jesus is God. And then uh, later on, they would say, you know, but Jesus died. And then we, I would say, but uh, that would mean that God died. And then they'd say, no, but God didn't die because you see, Jesus is both God and man. So in, in that discourse, you can see that the, the de definition of Jesus has actually changed. So you can't change a definition like uh, during the argument itself. Like if you're going from A, A leads to B, B leads to C, C leads to D, D leads to E, so you say A leads to E, because eventually it gets to E. But uh, if somehow by the time we get to E, and we realize that E is somehow like uh, incompatible with A, that's when somebody goes back and revises the meaning of A. But you can't revise the meaning of any of the terms within this uh, argument itself. You can have a, no, a whole different argument. For example, uh, we can say uh, let x equal uh, 2 and y equal 1. Well, it follows that x plus y equals 3 because it's 2 plus 1. But if somebody says, uh, no, you, you can't, be, uh, can't be 3, it must be 4. Uh, we say, how? And you say, well, because y equals 2. <laughs> well, then, okay, if you want to make y equal 2, that's fine, but it can't be within this argument. It has to be a new um, a discussion altogether. We have to say, now let's start afresh and say, let x equal 2 and y equal uh, 2 then x plus 2 y, x plus y equals 4. So it works if we start over. But it can't, it can't be within the same argument. That, that results in, in a lot of confusion. Now there's some technical terms, hardly any technical terms here. Uh, but uh, there is a, a type of argumentation that is uh, referred to in the classical text as modus uh, ponens, and another one that's called modus tollens. So uh, we, we should understand how these work. So without necessarily knowing the name. So modus ponens basically uh, is the idea that, uh, you know, if you say that uh, when A happens, B is necessarily going to follow, then if we know that A happens, then you know that necessarily B, B follows. For example, let's say somebody says that, okay, if, the, uh, if it rains, then the streets must be wet. So let's say somebody comes, back, come in from the, comes in from the streets and he says, you know, it's raining outside. Uh, so we know that the street must be wet. So we go, we have a look, we see the streets are dry. Uh, so and now we realize that something is wrong with this bit of information. How could, this, how could it have been raining if the streets are dry? Uh, so yeah, a simple formula, if A, then B. Now, uh, if, uh, if, it, if it's not the case that B happened, well, then it can't be the case that A happened either. Because if, if A happened, B would necessarily follow. So uh, a is it rains. B, the streets are wet. So if it rains, the streets are wet. If the streets are not wet, then it didn't rain. 
So this is called modus tollens. It's uh, it's um, asserting uh, or denying denying the consequent, showing that this did not follow and therefore the first thing did not happen. Some logical fallacies. One big fallacy is circular argumentation. Circular arguments. Uh, um, um, occur when somebody assumes the very thing which he or she is trying to uh, to prove. High school students do this all the time in their essays. They're trying to prove something, but they're assuming it throughout. Instead of uh, st stating, starting from a neutral perspective and present the arguments for the case, and then let the arguments, letting the arguments uh, uh, determine uh, the case. Uh, they start throughout. You can see that they are just, um, you know, uh, working with the assumption that their conclusion is correct, and uh, the argument is just simply like tagged on, uh, like icing on the cake. But no, uh, you, you you have to start from a neutral perspective. I encounter this in my dialogues all of the time. People can't get out of their minds uh, their preconceived notions and on what they're trying to prove. So. Uh, if we're trying to prove that, uh, you know, a classical thing that is given in, in, in these books and books of logic uh, with, is with examples from the Bible, because that's what the uh, English writers uh, seem to know most. Uh, otherwise, we can go, you know, it can apply to Muslims as well with, uh, you know, the presuppositions of a Muslim. Like, for example, the Quran is the word of God. Uh, so uh, the examples given in books like these is about the Bible. So if someone says, well, uh, God exists. How do we know? Because the Bible tells me so. And how do you know that uh, the Bible is true? Well, because the Bible is the Word of God. So now, by saying that the Bible is the Word of God here, uh, that uh, is assuming the very thing which you are trying to prove, the, the idea that God exists. You cannot start by assuming the very thing that you are trying to uh, prove. Uh, so uh, there are uh, many uh, such uh, fallacies in, in arguments. And uh, uh, we have to avoid those fallacies as we are presenting our cases. Otherwise, people sense instinctively that, uh, you know, you're committing fallacies and they're not going to be convinced by your arguments. So uh, it's a very important book for everyone to read, high school students, uh, anyone who's going to write an essay, anyone who's going to present an argument or argue for a case, whether it be in politics, in law, uh, or in business. And it can also be in your household, you're talking with your family members, you're making points and uh, people get into uh, arguments. Well, again, arguments does not mean necessarily that people are in a fighting mood, uh, but uh, in the context of this book, it means uh, presenting a case and doing so with reason, evidence and uh, proof. Uh, the contents of this book is the sort of thing that has uh, changed my life. And uh, I hope that this book will have an impact on you. And perhaps it may even change your life. I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali. Salaamu Alaikum. Thank you for watching. Videos like this one cost a lot of money to create. We do it for the pleasure of God. We want to give you the opportunity to share in the reward from God. Support us today and help us reach people all over the world. Visit QuranSpeaks.com and click Donate. Remember, your donation is a cat eligible and tax deductible.